The objective today would be for you to explain that there are new technologies that would be necessary uh, for us to store, manage, transmit, and process data at the scale that it is currently being produced. So in this lesson, students are introduced to the concept of big data, where it comes from, what makes it big, and how people use data to solve problems. Students are asked to consider how much of their lives are datafied, or could be. A key takeaway from the lesson is that different considerations need to be made when trying to look at, use, or analyze tools that use big data. The world of big data is big, and we've only begun to figure out how to solve problems within it. Big data is a big deal right now both in the field of computer science and more broadly across fields and industries. Understanding the types of things that can be captured in data and anticipating the types of innovations or new knowledge that can be built upon this data is increasingly the role of the computer scientist. A first step toward understanding big data is a survey of how big data is already being used to learn and solve problems across numerous disciplines. So based on that paragraph, why is big data such a big deal? The scale of big data makes it hard to see sometimes, and techniques for looking at, working with, and understanding data change once the data is big. Everything from how it's stored, to how it's processed, to how it's visualized is a little different once you enter the realm of big data. So the term big data basically just is a term for data sets so large or complex that traditional data processing applications are inadequate. Now, this concept of Moore's Law, or this term, Moore's Law, is just a prediction made by a guy named Gordon Moore in 1965 that computing power will double every year and a half to two years. It has remained more or less true ever since, so it's a very famous prediction. Now, my think right share here is how does big data relate to Moore's Law? Big data means different things at different times to different people. It can mean devices that are constantly collecting data. It can mean digitizing data that's been around for a long time, like every book ever written. And it can mean uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So that's my favorite right there. Um, of these three effects, which do you think will have the largest impact on your life as you grow older? Part of what contributes to data being big is the sheer growth of the amount of data in the world. The amount of data flying around is growing exponentially, doubling every two years or so. So here's a way to think about how fast this is. The world will produce as much digital data over the next two years as currently existed in all of humanity prior to that. And it will do the same the two years after that and so on. So that's a lot. And most of you every single day are generating more and more data yourselves by just participating in this class and playing on your phone. And this is where Moore's Law comes in. It is not a law of nature or mathematics, but simply a surprisingly accurate prediction that was made a long time ago. In 1965, a computer chip designer named Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors one could fit on a chip would double every 18 months or so. Amazingly, that prediction has more or less held true to this day. The result is that since 1970, computers have gotten twice as fast at half the cost, roughly every two years. So with some small differences, the same is true for data storage. My think right share here is if Moore's Law isn't a law of nature, what is it? Exponential growth, like artificial intelligence, is a word often misused, but in this case, I mean exponential. With more and more machines that are faster and faster, the amount of data being pushed around, saved, and processed is growing exponentially. This is so fast that it's hard to fathom and even harder to plan for. For example, if the average hard drive today is one terabyte, and you are planning for something six years away, you should expect that average hard drives will be 8 to 10 terabytes six years from now. The key takeaway, we need to keep Moore's Law in mind as we plan for the future. What else do you imagine will grow and thus need to be dealt with in the future?
And this doesn't necessarily have to be about technology. I just want you to think about something that's growing fast and that will be dealt with in the future and in your mind connect that concept with the concept of Moore's Law and exponential growth in general. Like I said, exponential is a word often used inappropriately or inaccurately, just like artificial intelligence is. And um, one of the f my favorite things I've heard about artificial intelligence, people need to worry about artificial intelligence like the Terminator, like being killed, like artificial intelligence killing humans. We need to worry about that, just like we need to worry about overpopulation on Mars. It's just not a problem that we have to consider right now. Okay, so we'll do some work here. Um, you're going to go to one of these three websites, either a web archive, uh, a website called measureofamerica.org. Um, you can check out the wind sensor network. I want you to choose any of these options here and choose four or five of these questions to answer using one of those websites. So the types of questions I'm looking for uh, answers for is what kinds of data are out there, uh, what format does it come in, uh, where does it come from, did anyone find a link to an actual data source, and did anyone find an API Okay, if you didn't find an API, go ahead and take an opportunity right here to just tell me what an API is, something we covered in a previous lesson. And that concludes today's lesson. When you think of data, you could think of something like this, the iceberg picture. We've just begun to uncover the effects that big data can have on this world. So go ahead and choose one of these to fill in the blanks. What I mean by that is which one of these IB profile attributes fits in today's lesson. And last step, DOL, after you have explored those websites, uh, what do you think big data actually means? So in your own words, essentially. And what makes it big as opposed to not? You please use specific examples from your research.